What's up guys, this is Alex from Xtrades, back to you with another weekly trade ideas list. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Um, we should have a pretty solid watch list here. Uh, last week we had a pretty good one as well, there's a couple good ones. Um, like Tesla and the Falling Wedge, that was a nice one. Um, and there's a couple others, so go ahead and check out the last video, you know, maybe get some educational um, value out of that. But um, before we start, please like, comment, and subscribe to our Xtrades YouTube channel. We are trying to get stuff to hit the algorithm more, so um, if you could do that for us, that'd be great. Um, we love y'all. So our first setup here, let's get into TTD. It's the um, trade desk. So our first level, um, we're going to want to see breakovers is 54.81. Um, it's pretty obvious we do have a breakout right here. We got test one, test number two, test number three. And you know, I always preach, you want three tests to validate the trend, and then, you know, after that, I can pretty much do whatever it wants. It can break out, it can reject again, and it, you know, be considered a broken trend or a continuing trend. Um, if you only have two tests, obviously that's not enough. So three tests, that's going to be your validation. And we do have that here, um, leading into a breakout. So this trend was broken. Um, we can go ahead and set an alert at over 54.81. We'll right click, add alert, at breakout. Um, same thing we did with, you know, TGT last week. Um, we were looking for that one level to break. It actually did. I think it got like a nice like 2% move over it. So good for a day trade if you caught that last week as well. Um, so we did the same thing. Just right click, add alert, name a breakout, and then we wait. Um, obviously, it's pretty close. So unless the market like gaps down or does anything drastic, you know, there's a good chance this could pop over. And um, if you're looking for where it'll head to, probably see it head up to this 200 EMA um, and also this 5867 resistance so yeah pretty straightforward and we're really we're looking at calls in that so um, upside potential next we're going to eBay another breakout trade this one's just a little bit different um, just because you do have the back test already commenced so you see you have a breakout it pulls back holding back test and you want to see it um, Go ahead and run up to, you know, this is your full trading range right here. This 47.13 to 43.53. Um, kind of like a tight range, but it is a tradable range. And it would, you know, pay pretty good on calls if it did want to get some upside. Um, you might have short-term resistance. Here, let's go down to this. Go down to the one hour. You might have short-term resistance, um, 46.09. You can see it's a really big pivot. Um, it did find resistance prior, so... Um, it only makes sense that, you know, if it did want to get some upside after the back test, it'd probably try to reject about there. Um, ideally, you'd want to see it, you know, break over, um, pull back, back test, hold the level, and then head into your 47.13. So um, that's just something you want to look for in the smaller time frames. Obviously, on the daily, it doesn't look as crucial, right? Um, there's nothing crazy. You know, this 46.09 is actually, you know, pretty close. So um, compared to these moves over here, you know, this is pretty tight. So this 47.13 to 43.53 is pretty small compared to, you know, what it's putting in from the bottom here. But yeah, we'll be looking at calls on that. Um, just a breakout to back test, look for it to reverse to the upside and, you know, top out about the 200 EMA or this 47.13. So TTD and eBay looking at calls. NVAX. So this is Novavax. This is a biotech play. Um, obviously a huge, huge play during the pandemic. Um, when, you know, in 2020, when COVID first came out, I can even go back a little bit, show you how massive these freaking moves are. Um, you know, when their vaccine uh, was getting a lot of hype and um, when a lot of vaccine plays actually were getting hype. So you can see, I mean, just you got this one huge move to um, sorry, my computer's lagging. You got this one big move to the you know two hundreds almost, and then you got another huge one up into the three hundreds. Um, created a lot of bag holders up here, but now we're down in the sixteens. Um, the thing has just gotten slammed since twenty twenty one. So um, you do got to be careful. This one's pretty volatile, as are all other biotechs. Pretty much, um, they're going to have high IV options. Um, if you don't know what IV stands for, it's implied volatility. It kind of prices in your premiums a little bit um, and it will make them pricier if it's higher and cheaper if it's lower but um so this 16 level 
is 16 flat. That's your support slash pivot. Um, and then your max top here is like 2566. So a pretty wide range. Um, if we brought out the info line, we do have about a 61%, 60% move of Y between here. So it doesn't look like much on the daily, but this is huge. Um, so you're not going to need to, you know, shoot for the sky on this one unless you want to, you know, buy and hold it for a couple months. You know, it, it could squeeze up pretty high. Um, but ideally, we are getting wick reactions to support. So you got a big wick here showing buyers pushed up and up until the end of the day. Another wick pushing up, um, showing buyers pushed up until the end of the day here. And this is kind of like a hammer slash bullish, you know, um, just a nice bullish candle, kind of like a hammer slash doji. Um, showing that buyers did indeed add pressure. So ideally, you want to see it hold the 16 flat. Um, obviously, it would be invalid if it went under 16. If it does hold 16, um, you probably see this little resistance right here at 18.06. Still a big move. Um, I mean, that's a $2 move on a $16 stock, so that's going to give you, you know, a good percentage. Um, if it was able to, oops, sorry about that. If it was able to break over that, you want to see a break, back test, hold, and then it, you know you would look for resistance at the 50 EMA next, just like you saw here. So, since there's no like close resistance or anything um, until this 2566, and this is literally all just a sell imbalance, you're gonna to want to look for um, moving averages, you know, because those are mid range, and you'd be able to make a determination on a price target. So yeah. Looking at calls on this too, this is a counter trend play, kind of risky, um, but it could be a good one. So, yeah. So you got your three call plays here. Our next two uh, can go either way because they're at trend lines. They're not broken out yet, and um, a decision can still be made. That's going to be Apple and Spy. We'll go ahead and get into Apple first. So Apple here. Um, you have a pretty clear downtrend line. You got test one, test two, test number three. Another test right there, it's like four. That's number five. So you got a lot of tests here, number six. Um, so this line is very established. And um, last week, or maybe it was a different week, I'm not sure if it was last week or what, we we're looking for it to reject this. It did indeed. We had strictly puts that we were looking for on this one, whatever. I think it was last week. And um, we're just looking for a move down to 146.15. It was able to do that. So um, good trend line play. Same thing again here. You know, on confirmation of a rejection, we'd be looking at puts. Um, confirmation of a breakout, you'd be looking at calls. And another good thing about this is that this name compared to like SPY and QQQ, I mean, this move off the bottom isn't nearly as big as, you know, um, the SPY and QQQ moved off the bottom. So this could be like a lagger. And um, leave a lot of room for upside, considering you know it's one of the top weighted in these indexes. Um, another thing that why it could have been lagged is because it's already had such a great performance this year, and um, it was kind of like a safety play when other stuff was tanking. So if you see, it's only down like 16 year to date, and it was running up to like <laughs> I mean all time highs, pretty much, and um, almost I mean, right right up to that level. You know, in 2022, it's just unheard of for, for big tech. You know, after seeing all those names get slammed, Apple's a very good, like, safety play um, sometimes when it wants to be. So, yeah, this trend line, um, just going to be waiting to see if it rejects, heads back down to demand, or if it wants to break out and get over the 200 EMA, head back to supply. So, um, this is a call and put trade. Just wait for confirmation. Same as last week, you had a confirmation of a rejection, follow through selling at the open, and they give you a confirmation to take puts and um, to make a good day trade or, you know, a couple days swing trade down to this little pivot that we covered. And I actually went lower than that. But after that, created really nice demand here. You got a nice drop base rally demand and you'll see it pull back, make a base and hopefully break out for bulls. Um, if it can't, you see it run back down to demand, make a nice short term day trade between this range. And um, I wouldn't be any more bearish than that unless it gets under this demands on the low so bulls if it's able to break out you'd be looking at 153.59 this 200 ema and also this 157.50 so yeah those are your levels so calls and puts on this just wait for confirmation
SPY. So um, we usually cover the ES futures, but this time we won't have to because we're covering the SPY. Same thing. It's the S&P 500 um, at a critical point, by the way. Um, this is the all-time high to current downtrend line we've been covering for a while. It is coming up to that. It's at supply. So I'm going to be looking forward to either reject here. Um, and another thing, the, the VIX aligns with, you know, a little pullback, you know, because it's at 19. So it's at the 19 level we covered. So we'll get into that next. But we're going to be looking forward to either reject here, pull back into the trend line, curl up about there, or we're going to look forward to break out supply, make a base, and run into the next supply. So a huge inflection point. Um, this is another call or put trade. I already do have QQQ puts. So, um, you know, I scaled into a small position. I took one, let it go up a little more, added another. You know, it was only down like a little bit, but just long two contracts at the moment. Um, see if we can catch some downside. But, you know, there is still upside risk. You can see after the jobs data, I mean, we gapped down. Filled the whole gap back up and even went green for a brief second. So um, obviously Jerome Powell's, you know, speech gassed everybody up. Um, rate hikes are going to maybe slow in December. And, um, you know, market's very forward looking. You know, they're probably already thinking about a pivot. <laughs> so just something to keep an eye out. But keep in mind, VIX is really low. Um, calls can be dangerous up here. Wait for confirmation of the breakout for calls. And, um, you know, trade safe. But you got supply, downtrend line not cleared yet, um, so it could be good for puts. So you can see how this could go either way. Um, and that's the cool thing about trend line plays is that they are versatile. You just wait for confirmation. So yeah, I'll go over them again. We got TTD, we're looking at calls. eBay, looking at calls in the back test. NVAX, counter trend off 16 support. Calls, Apple, calls or puts, depending on what it wants to do. Spy, calls or puts. Next, we'll go into the NASDAQ. Let's see what we got here. So last week, we wanted to see this 12, uh, 12,000, what is that, 118 level get broke um, or get tested even. It was not able to clear that, so it is finding small resistance here. So bears do have a small argument, um, minus this ginormous wake, which shows that buyers you know, added crazy pressure all the way up until the end of the day because um, these are daily candles so wherever you see the close that's where it ended um, and this is the whole trading day so this was all buying up until this about 12,000 so huge pressure from the bulls even after that scary jobs data showing that you know um, wages aren't slowing so we'll have to maybe see some a um, little more pressure in the labor market to you know, know that maybe, you know, the Fed's fight for inflation to go down is working. But anyways, so it's 12,118. Um, bears have an argument back down to the same low to, from where we bottomed in on non-farm payroll data. Um, with a potential for as low as this demand or 50 EMA area, which is slightly under it. Um, so that would be my max PT probably for the bears. Um, if we were able to get over that, obviously, we're going to see a break, make a base per usual. If we're trying to go higher up into this 200 EMA. Um, and this is like the same gist. You got all-time highs down to current trend line. So um, that's all it is. Same thing as what you saw in SPY. Um, just a little bit different because this is the NASDAQ and it does move just a tad bit different. Even though the, the main stock's weighting is, you know, kind of similar. So, yeah. Um, QQQ traders just want to see it stay under this level and, you know, maybe get down to here. Uh, bulls do want to see a break over the same resistance, get over the trend line, and be able to get over the 200 EMA eventually. So that'll be a problem um, short term. You know, because it's not going to break right away. So we might see it, you know, do a lot of chopping up as you've been seeing. Next, we'll go into RTY. It's the small mid caps. So last week, um, we are looking for it to pull into this trend line. Because it was finding resistance at the 200 EMA, it did exactly that. Pulled in the trend line. I said if it pulled down here and it was holding the 50 EMA um, area and this pivot low, you know, you could look at IWM calls. Huge move on the Jay Powell um, reaction and speech. So, yeah, it would have been good for IWM calls. Still holding up trend line, and you do have an ascending triangle here. So, um, wouldn't sorry, 
hit the trash. So what an ascending triangle is, is it build up a vine. You got flat top resistance. So think of this as like, you know, steam in a pot. Um, it's building up, building up, higher lows, higher highs, um, but also has flat top resistance. Eventually it's going to blow off the top um, if the pattern holds and, you know, break out. So that's all an ascending triangle is. Same thing with a descending triangle. It's just the opposite except uh, it's bearish. So you can see it um, making lower highs, lower lows with flat bottom uh, support, and then it would break down. So this is just the opposite of that, uh, to the upside. So just think about it like steam in a pot, just rising, 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 um, and eventually it will blow off the top. So look for that 19, 13 level to break. Um, and also make sure the trend line still holds, but otherwise bulls look good on this. My almanac even shows uh, December is a good time to start looking at small mid caps to buy. So um, maybe it's good for, you know, the seasonality is good on the Russell. But yeah, nothing specific. Um, look for the ascending wedge or ascending triangle breakout. Um, bears, you want to see the trend line break, which is obvious. Next. Oops. Excellent hit backspace. So we're going into the VIX. Um, this will tie into what we just went over on the SPY. So the 2022 average close that we cover every time it did drop um, pretty significantly is now under 26. This is sub 26 now. Um, and all the videos that we've been covering, you know, it's been in the 26s. After all these violent moves down and, you know, closes under the 2022 average was able to bring it down pretty significantly. So it's now at 25.95, and we're at the 19.12 level that we were looking for, and it even closed under that. So um, you're going to see it make a base here soon if you're a bear on the indexes. Otherwise, you know it could break, and it probably will like come back up test before trying to go lower. But um, if it can't, you want to see it curl up. It will go back up to 22.64 and start heading back to the 2022 average close. And um, I'll show you the data. Just so you know that this is legit, and it's a legit average. I track it. So this is each close. Friday's close puts us at um, 1907, brings us down to 25.95. And this is the 50 period moving average, similar to what you see on the trading view chart. This is just um, implemented manually. So you just put in the data, and the system you know, will put out a moving average for you, which is pretty cool. So yeah, that's the VIX. Look for it to curl up at 19s um, or break under that. Um, if you're a bear, you want to see volatility come back. But yeah, I think it could start mean regressing. Um, so, you know, maybe if you're bearish, this would be a good area to um, get puts with time on it. You know, so you can deal with any upside risk, let it form a top, uh, let the VIX form a bottom a little bit before trying to spike and have a mean regression. So. Yeah, it's going to be a good level to start adding puts. Uh, they're very cheap. Premiums are way below average right now um, compared to what you paired, paid all year. Um, and that's what the 2022 average close is um, showing you. So DXY, US dollar, um, just got slammed last week after the Jay Powell speech. Um, it did break under this 104. You see that 104.63 broke under that. Um, and it did go under the 200 EMA also. So it made a base off the 200 EMA. It looked like it was going to reverse, but j Powell's speech did bring it down very aggressively. So now it's breaking the 104. Next, you'll be looking for, I'll show you the level real quick. If we zoom out, I'm going to be looking for this 102.99 slash 103. Just rounded up to 103, to be honest, um, which is this 2020 peak. This is actually when COVID um, was first hitting. The dollar did spike super hard before the Fed, you know, did start printing money just out of nowhere and look what happened but yeah um i mean it makes total sense when you look at it right uh, eventually you know this was going to be tested just because it's such a major level you see it fall down a little bit probably try to curl up about there so previous resistance turning new support um that's what you'd be looking for but otherwise um if you're bearish and you want to see the market die, you're going to want to see it reclaiming over 104.63, the same level we just covered, which comes from this base right here. So you want to see it get back over, get back over 105, and, you know, head back to these little points of resistance up here. So, yeah. Um, so you want to see it reclaim over, 
Bears, you want to keep it under, and you could have a max PT down to those that 103 level that I covered, which is from 2020. So yeah, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully this is a good watch list again, and um, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, our X-Trades YouTube channel. I'm going to go ahead and end this, send it over to our editor, and um, work on the you know written report for y'all. If y'all don't, don't know, in our Discord, we do have a written report of the same stuff we just covered, minus the indexes. Um, you're just going to see the top five setups that we went over, and um, a little summary. So if you just need a quick read and can't always watch the videos, I recommend going to the Options Watchlist channel and um, check it out. It's pretty quick. It'll tell you if I'm looking for calls or puts. Um, pick which one looks best to you, and that's why I do it. Um, you got five different ones you can pick from. You see from your experience or from your screen time which one you know fits you the best, which has the best risk to reward. And um, you know, remember that these are just ideas and they're not like suggestions or anything you know i'm not a financial advisor so i'm just posting my ideas and a lot of times i'm posting quality because i do go through a list of about 250 names it takes me a couple hours so um you know we are looking for quality here and uh, they're pretty reliable so um yeah hope you guys enjoyed love you guys i'm gonna go ahead and get going bye bye